Today, the Sun Prairie community marks five years since a massive explosion rocked the city. Our Eric Franke is there with live coverage as the community moves forward. We have special coverage throughout the next half hour. But first, a quick weather update from Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? Pretty things are just warm around here, not seeing any rain across southern Wisconsin, but there are some showers and thunderstorms developing up to the north. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this later on for the possibility for some showers and storms to start rolling through here by mid to late evening across much of southern Wisconsin. We'll see how much that holds together. Temperatures right now, 86 in Madison, 90 degrees in the Dells, 90 in Boscobel. These temperatures are going to stay pretty warm for the next couple of hours. Look for temperatures to start in the upper 80s by 6 p.m., only be down into the upper 70s by 10 p.m., but Again, there will be some rain chances later on this evening. Thank you, Gary. Well, you're looking at breaking news out of Iowa County. The Sheriff's Office is asking people to avoid the area around the 100 block of West Fountain Street in Dodgeville due to a gas leak. Our News 3 Now crew is at the scene and says that residents in the two block radius of the area have been evacuated and gas was still leaking as of 4.15 today. A strong smell of gas is being reported. Road construction is happening in the area, but it's not immediately clear if it is related to the gas leak. Also happening now, a News 3 Now crew is headed to a rapidly spreading fire near uh, in Washera County. A viewer sent us this photo. The DNR tells us the fire has already destroyed three structures and burned about 70 acres. Evacuations are underway, and we'll know a lot more later this evening once our crew gets there. Now on to our special coverage of Sun Prairie Stronger. There was this big boom, and it knocked me to the ground. And I felt it like it took the breath out of my body. And, and more than even heard it, we felt it. We didn't lose a firefighter yesterday. We lost a family member. Good morning, everybody. I am... Course. I can't find the proper words in the English dictionary to talk about how amazing he was. One of the best darn firefighters. He had so much passion for the fire service. The world seems to keep turning, and for me, it feels like it's standing still. Five years ago today, a massive explosion rocked the Sun Prairie community. Eric Franke was live at the scene the week of the incident, and he joins us again live from the area to tell us how the community is moving yeah, forward. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, okay. So that Three, evening. It was, it was five yeah. years ago tonight, July, yeah, 8, so, uh, July 10th so of 2018. So they're doing some uh, It started TV at about 6.20 yeah, yeah, p.m. They're doing an open. from where we're standing right now. Uh, about 40 minutes later is when that explosion well, you happened. You enjoyed about 7 nice later, you. The investigation, that. That's it was determined yeah, that a construction crew had hit a mislabeled gas line near the corner of Maine and Bristol in the heart of downtown Sun Prairie. The gas leak ultimately is what caused that explosion. Several people, including police and firefighters, were injured. Dozens were forced from their homes and businesses. The force of the blast also leveled surrounding homes and buildings. Then Governor Scott Walker declared a state of emergency in the wake of the incident. The explosion, of course, also killed Sun Prairie Volunteer Fire Captain Corey Barr, the only fatality of the incident. Barr at the time was in the area checking on his family's business. He also helped evacuate dozens of people just before that explosion. Sun Prairie's Fire Chief Chris Garrison would later say he believes Barr saved multiple lives that night. And here's what he had to say the morning after the explosion, after announcing that Captain Barr had passed away. We lost a friend. We lost a dear friend and we will be affected forever, but we will continue to build strength and be a better organization with Corey's legacy in our hearts. Those words about strength turned into a rallying cry for the community. The hashtag Sun Prairie Strong taking off on social media in the following days and weeks. And it has been a long healing process for Sun Prairie since that day. Parts of the downtown area have been rebuilt, including renovations to the city hall, the old city hall, I should say. That old city hall building is located right across the street and was damaged in the blast. A new home for Glass Nickel Pizza is on East Main Street. And a new multi-use development is going up on one of the corners right there at Bristol and Main. Now, I want to bring in now uh, the mayor. He was the mayor that night, and Paul Esser is still the mayor of Sun Prairie. Mayor, thank you so much once again for taking the time to you're, share your thoughts. You're on welcome. What happened. Glad uh, to it's be hard here. to believe it's been five years. It is. But Sun Prairie has come a long way in those five years. It has. It has. Everything happened so quickly that night. And the next morning, we wake up, begin assessing where things are at. We knew we had to move on, right. yet we had this tragic event in our community. We had to get through that. We had to 
do the memorial for mm -hmm. Corey Barr and, and his family, but we moved on after that. In November, the road reopened. The state got that road rebuilt in four months. It's phenomenal that could happen. And the day we did that, I said, this is symbolic of some very moving forward. Right. We're opening up the downtown again. What will that spot be? I understand it's going to be developed. A lot of people ask what will happen to that location where the bar house was. And I understand there is going to be, even though it's what a developer is involved, but they're going to allow this to also be a place of remembrance. So we as the city have that property identified for residential housing apartments. And we have a developer now that has approached the city that wants to do about 150 units of residential apartments. And then across the front of that site on Main Street wants to do a four-story hotel okay. that will include a steak restaurant. So I think that's really appropriate. If we have to go through this horrific event, right. let's come out of it with providing places for people to live. And a remembrance at the same time. Uh, and you asked to... me that, I didn't answer yeah. that. Yes, at the corner, the developer is providing space that there will be a memorial developed there and leaving it to the community to do it. Now, at this point, it's only a proposal, so it may change along the way, but it looks promising. Well, thank you very much, as always, for being gracious with your time. I know it's a, a special day for this community to pay their respects and remember what happened five years ago today. That's Mayor uh, Paul Esser joining us once again. Thank you very much. Now, uh, of course, for everyone else, they were affected by it. But for one woman, this marks a day that she would call the worst of her life. Corey Barr's widow, Abby, spoke to us just days ago about the ways she has healed since then and also the ways she is still very much hurting. She has used exercise, health, and wellness to cope, but some days the grief is as poignant as that yeah. day five years ago. I'm determined when she first to walk got off with Now it's their twin daughters who continue to give her strength. That entrepreneurial spirit stems from Corey. Um, those girls stem from Corey. Who I am stems from um, my relationship with Corey and his passing. Now, hers is a story that continues to be shared with our Armand Rahman, whose full special report airs tonight on News 3 Now at 6. Now, in 2020, just three years ago and two years after the incident, a memorial was dedicated in Corey Barr's honor, and the street located adjacent to the fire station was actually renamed Barr Street. And Abby and the twin girls attended that ceremony where a bronze statue of Corey was unveiled. The fire department says everyone is welcome to stop by the memorial today to drop off flowers, notes, and other mementos. I've also noticed that there have been quite a few of those uh, memorial items located at the site of the explosion just a couple hundred yards up the street. And as the community continues to move forward, the city pauses to remember this tragedy every July 10th. Today, Barr's family joined Sun Prairie Fire and Rescue in multiple events commemorating the anniversary of the explosion. This afternoon, Abby held a fundraiser for spouses of fallen first responders. The Barr family also joined crews right here behind me in this building at the Sun Prairie Fire Station to remember the life of Corey Barr. And we also want to mention that happening now until 8 p.m. tonight, the community can gather for a, uh, a gathering there will be at the Glass Nickel Pizza. That's the new Glass Nickel Pizza location on East Main Street, not far from where we are right now. So as the city, obviously, the hustle and bustle of one of the fastest growing communities in all of Wisconsin continues to go on, they do pause every July 10th to pay their respects and remember Corey Barr. Brady? Thank you, Eric. And our live coverage continues tonight as the Sun Prairie community marks this anniversary. You can follow along by downloading our News 3 Now app or visiting channel3000.com. And there you'll find links to all of our archived video and coverage from the night of the explosion, all the way up to today's anniversary coverage. Madison police are investigating after an unresponsive man was pulled from Lake Monona this morning. Officers and fire crews were called to John Nolan and North Shore Drives just before 6 this morning for a report of a person in the water. Life-saving efforts were unsuccessful and the man was pronounced dead. The incident remains under investigation. A Cassville man also died after he was thrown from his vehicle during a crash in Grant County over the weekend. It happened on Highway 133 near Oak Lane at about 1030 on Sunday. Investigators say 44-year-old Jesse Shar, Sar, rather, was driving east on the highway. When his vehicle went into the ditch, he then overcorrected, causing his vehicle to spin out and roll onto its roof. Deputies say Sar was not wearing a seatbelt and was thrown from the vehicle. He was pronounced dead at the scene.
Today, the Wisconsin State Patrol confirmed Connor McKenzie, the longtime Northwoods League umpire who died in a crash while traveling to a Madison Mallards game, was thrown from his vehicle that he was riding in. 29-year-old McKenzie was a passenger in an SUV that State Patrol officials said rolled over in the median along I-39 between Hancock and Plainfield in Washera County on Sunday at about 11.45 a.m. Paramedics who first arrived began CPR on McKenzie, but they couldn't revive him and he was pronounced dead at the scene. A 31-year-old California man and 21-year-old Texas man were taken to UW Hospital in Madison, but they are expected to recover from their injuries. The Sauk County Sheriff's Office says all avenues are being looked into in the search for a 13-year-old boy who has not been seen in a month. James Yablonski reportedly left his home sometime overnight, June 12th into June 13th, in his family's van, which was later found along Highway 12 near Devil's Lake State Park. He has not been seen since. Anyone with information on Yablonski's whereabouts should contact the Sauk County Sheriff's Office at 608-355-4495 or Sauk County Crime Stoppers at 1-888-847-7285. And next at 5, Gary has our latest complete forecast, plus how torrential rainfall is affecting northeastern communities. A closer look at what they're dealing with just ahead. And later we'll have more live coverage from Sun Prairie as the community marks five years since the devastating explosion. Stock started the week on a positive note. The Dow Industrials gained 209 points, closing at 33,944. The Nasdaq added 24 and the S&P 500 tacked on 10 and a half points. Revamp, we transform your old beat up concrete floor from this to this in one day. We grind down the concrete to open up the pores for a perfect bond. Then we repair all cracks and apply our base coat and chip and seal it with our polyaspartic top coat that will never chip, peel, or discolor. On top of all that, our coatings are ridiculously easy to clean and covered by our exclusive lifetime warranty. And right now, when you purchase your new concrete coating from any of our revamped brands, you'll get 12 months, no interest, no payments, or 40% off the installation. And when you call during this program, you'll also get up to 10 carbon fiber concrete stitches free which help reinforce cracks and stop them from spreading. A $350 value for free. South Central Wisconsin homeowners, pick up the phone. Call 1-800-886-8411. That's 1-800-886-8411. At Lawton Cates, your life counts is more than just a slogan. It means we're committed to seeking justice for those injured by someone else's negligence. It means standing up to the insurance company, helping you with your medical bills, and getting you fully compensated for lost time at work. Have questions? When you contact Lawton Cates, there's no charge for our initial consultation, and there's never a fee until we deliver the results you deserve. At Lawton Cates, your life counts. Call today. Fry Construction invites you to celebrate summer with our hot summer sale. We're talking about hot savings of 23%. Many of your neighbors already know how we strive to meet and exceed expectations with each and every project. That's why they voted us best roofer three years in a row. Experience the best of Madison for yourself with Fry Construction. Get on board for our hot summer sale. Save 23% off gutters with any full roofing or siding project. Schedule your consultation today at fryconstruction.com. Join us tonight at 6 as we look back at a life-altering moment that changed everything in Sun Prairie. Reflecting on the catastrophic explosion and hearing from Corey Barr's wife, who bravely shares her journey through the tragedy. Tonight at 6. Five years after a horrific explosion, Sun Prairie rebuilds while honoring a fallen firefighter. He was just an amazing guy. Arman Rahman shows you how the city is healing to make Sun Prairie stronger. Tonight on News 3 Now at 6. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. 
Tomorrow, oddly enough, is election day for a handful of our viewers in Wisconsin. Political reporter Will Keneally reports from Columbia County with more on this little known race. So you wouldn't really expect it, an election in the middle of the summer in an odd year. But up here in Columbia County, there will be an election tomorrow to recall a county board supervisor. Uh, well, I actually found out uh, it was actually in a board meeting. A little more than a year after joining the county board, Adam Hahn now faces another election, a recall. A person, an individual had stood up and just um, had some remarks and basically had handed some paperwork forward to the front of the room, um, basically just issuing a, a recall for myself. You don't often see recalls of local officials, but Hans said it was over a hot button local issue. You know, solar is a huge thing. There are a handful of solar projects under development in Columbia County, including one near Hans beef farm. He says there are concerns among some of the residents who don't want to see the panels go up. I guess it's kind of a catch 22 where nobody's willing to go without services. Um, what are we going to do to replace the services that are being are going to be shut down? And, um, you know, how do we fill in that gap? He says some argue there is more that he could be doing, but he says that it's not really his purview. There, there is some definite more county involvement in, say, of these smaller s solar plants or uh, facilities that are coming to the area. Um, over 100 megawatt, it, it literally is uh, the, the state government. Uh, the governor appoints a three-person panel on a public service commission. We reached out to Hans challenger Derek Granquist for an interview. We spoke briefly on the phone, but he wasn't immediately available to answer our questions or to go on camera. Now, this is all ahead of that recall election tomorrow. We'll have the full updates for you up online tomorrow night at channel3000.com. Reporting from Columbia County, Will Keneally, News 3 Now. 340,000 employees at one of the nation's largest shipping companies could be on strike in just a few weeks, which might wreak havoc on supply chains around the world. Contract negotiations between UPS and the union representing employees are at a standstill. 97% of unionized employees voted in favor of going on strike if a deal isn't reached by the end of the month. Several items have already been agreed upon. But the Teamsters Union is still looking for pay increases for both full and part-time workers. UPS claims the Teamsters have stopped negotiating and called its proposals historic. Sean O'Brien, the general president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, wants UPS to reward its employees for working throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Because if it wasn't for the part-timers, if it wasn't for the full-timers, um, you know, this country wouldn't have ran through the pandemic and UPS made $100 billion, so they certainly can afford to reward these people that made them a tremendous success. The last time UPS workers went on strike was in 1997. Operations were shut down for more than two weeks. Let's get a look at your first warm forecast with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary. Hi, oh, Brady. Uh, things are warm out there, but right now it's dry, and we could use the rain. Three things you need to know in the forecast. Looks like that warm weather is going to continue through next week, with one exception. Wednesday, a little more cloud cover will keep temperatures, high temperatures in the middle 70s. But the precipitation is going to come in spots, and other spots may miss out altogether. I think there will be chances for showers and storms tonight, Thursday, and Saturday. Maybe a little better chance tomorrow night into Wednesday and maybe Friday afternoon. But... Hot weather will return by the end of next week with high temperatures up around 90 and with little or no rain, that will just help make the drought situation worse. High resolution radar, southern Wisconsin right now precipitation free. However, up to the north, we're watching some showers and thunderstorms starting to develop. There's actually been a couple of severe thunderstorms within the last hour across parts of upper Michigan and the Storm Prediction Center is monitoring central Wisconsin for a possible weather watch. There is a severe thunderstorm watch farther out to the west. That's where the strong to severe thunderstorms have been developing. But you can see six hour future track radar showing that line of storms uh, coming together and expanding a little bit and then as it pushes into southern Wisconsin this is a little after 11 p.m. notice the line starting to weaken a little bit so we'll have to see how much of that precipitation actually holds together but the severe weather threat will be higher to the north and west a level two or slight risk of severe thunderstorms mainly for wind and hail across parts of central Wisconsin it's possible that a stronger storm with an isolated severe weather threat could make it as far south as Madison then tomorrow the higher severe weather sh uh, uh, weather uh, threat shifts to the south and west 
west, whereas we still have a marginal risk or a level one risk for an isolated severe thunderstorm over far southern Wisconsin. That'll be the case again Wednesday. The cloud cover making us a little bit cooler and lower, lowering the severe weather threat. But again, we can't rule out an isolated strong to severe storm. The rain is what we need, and it's going to be spotty. In fact, this is just literally updated in the last couple of minutes since I uh, was putting the show together. And you can see now it's showing about an inch to an inch and a half of rain up toward La Crosse and uh, Madison in the quarter to half inch range. The last computer model run had the heaviest rain down near the Illinois state line with some one or two inch rainfall amounts. So again, it's going to depend on where those stronger storms develop. They're more likely to be out to the south and west over the next couple of days across Iowa. Southern Wisconsin, the precipitation will be more spotty. Some areas will get beneficial rain. Other areas, unfortunately, will miss out. Planning your night across Dane County. Low of 67 Belleville, 65 in Sun Prairie, 68 in Deerfield. Again, can't rule out an isolated shower or storm chance. 65 for the low of Madison, 68 Janesville, and 66 in Lone Rock. For tomorrow, look for a high temperature of 85. Should be dry during the day. It'll be very warm, but the humidity level is not too bad. As we look at uh, this evening, again, those showers and thunderstorms coming in from the north and west at 8 p.m. out toward Camp Douglas. Midnight, right around Madison, but then they start to break up a little bit. And notice by 4 o'clock, they're pretty much gone. The next batch of storms arrives Tuesday night into Wednesday. Again, these even more widely scattered. So we'll just have to see how many of them can hold together and bring us some beneficial rain. That's more likely to occur Wednesday afternoon. Rainfall amounts spotty. Areas that get heavier thunderstorms, maybe an inch to an inch and a half. Other areas, less than a quarter of an inch of rain. First warn 7 to 10 day forecast. Again, that's 75 on Wednesday, but then back up into the mid 80s and up to around 90 by the end of next week. Temperatures go up and the rain chances unfortunately go down. As we look at first warrant traffic right now, eastbound Beltline seeing some slow spots there. Things kind of slowed down there. Uh, about a 22 minute trip on the eastbound Beltline, 15 minutes back in the westbound direction between University Avenue and the interstate. 25 minutes from the Beltline to Janesville and I-3990. 17 minutes from Middleton to Sauk City. A little uh, extended time downtown to Sun Prairie, about a 22 minute trip. That's your news three now, first warrant traffic. Thank you, Gary. More rain is in the forecast for parts of the Northeast after a whole summer's worth of rain dropped in just a few hours in the region, wiping out roads in New York's Hudson Valley and beyond. The slow-moving, relentless storm reached northern New England after dumping excessive rainfall in parts of New York and Connecticut. Floodwaters turned roads into rivers in Orange County, New York on Sunday, when almost eight inches of rain fell in just a few hours. Officials say a 35-year-old woman was killed after she was swept away by the floodwaters. The storm has already caused tens of millions of dollars in damage and canceled hundreds of flights in the New York and Boston airports. Coming up, why health officials and lawmakers are sounding the alarm over a popular energy drink. Stay with us. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. You've got this. You didn't think your sister would take you up on the dog sitting offer, but here you are. Barriers? Purchased. Doggy distractions? No expense spared. Yeah. You've got this, just like Associated Banks got you with $50 overdraft gray zone. So when you have to make a purchase, or seven, to prepare, you can be sure we're looking out for you, so you can look out for him. You've got this with Associated Bank. It's Champion Windows' 70th anniversary sale, and we're giving the presents to you. Right now, get 40% off new windows, plus pay nothing for 18 months. And we're giving away $70,000 in our home makeover giveaway. 70 years of designing, building, installing, and guaranteeing Champion Comfort 365 windows direct from our factory to your home. Don't wait. Get 40% off windows today. Call or schedule your free estimate online 24-7 at GetChampionWindows.com. Wish you had help getting things done. Same. So I got section one. Spass internet, unlimited mobile, and advanced Wi-Fi, all for a great price. Spectrum helps me run all this easily. Work, bust. Treat dispenser, treating.
And since I'm always on this, Unlimited Mobile is a no-brainer. Get Spectrum Internet for $49.99 a month plus advanced Wi-Fi and your first line of Unlimited Mobile free for 12 months. Call 833-802-4999 or visit Spectrum.com today. I'm Megan Tim, Director of Community Health at SSM Health. You may know us as healthcare providers, but we live here too. And as good neighbors, we know our community thrives when we take care of each other. That's why SSM Health and News 3 Now are sharing the keys to health. Watch for our expert information and advice on air, online, and at fun local events. Join SSM Health and News 3 Now, and together, we'll unlock a healthier community by taking time for kids. Stanley Steamer loves Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Paul Ashick, local owner of Stanley Steamer here in Madison. We've been proudly cleaning your homes and businesses for over 30 years and will continue to keep your carpet, upholstery, area rugs, hard floors, and air ducts clean for many more. We strive to provide the best quality in both the services we provide and the equipment we use. That's why you've trusted us to keep Madison and southwestern Wisconsin homes cleaner, healthier, and more beautiful place to live. Call and book a cleaning today. Stanley Steamer, it's your home cleaner. You got me. Ty, you're it. Imagine a world with no drama. With 4imprint, you don't have to chase down the perfect promotional products. Exclusive apparel, bags, drinkware, and more. 4imprint will help you capture the moment and guarantee to deliver your order on time and on budget. Take the drama out of ordering promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Lawmakers are raising concerns over a popular energy drink. Gloria Pazmino tells us it has six times the caffeine of a can of Coke and poses a health risk to children and teenagers. It's one of the hottest trends of the summer. Uh oh. Now, the influencer created energy drink Prime is facing growing scrutiny. This is an eye popping level of ca caffeine for a young kid's body. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is calling on the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to investigate the product. Prime energy drinks contain more than double the caffeine of a can of Red Bull and six times more caffeine than a can of Coca-Cola. The amount of caffeine in these drinks can give children and teens headaches, it can give them jitters, nervousness, it can interfere with the sleep cycle, which is so important to the developing brain. According to its website, the company does not recommend the energy drinks for anyone under the age of 18. Still, Schumer claims the company is targeting children through social media. Kids see it on their phones as they scroll, and then they actually have a need for it. The company also sells a caffeine-free drink called Prime Hydration. But there are concerns the branding between the two products are too similar. Because the product is built as, high, as a hydration and sports drink in its other near-identical form, kids are likely to ingest cans of this stuff with the parents being unaware. I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. A final check of your first sworn forecast when we return. Do you suffer from chronic or severe back or neck pain? Did you know that there is now a treatment method available right here at Midwest Spine and Nerve Center that offers hope of avoiding spinal surgery for those suffering with bulging, herniated, or degenerative discs? Our therapies help reduce pain related to these conditions and have a high success rate in helping people just like you avoid back or neck surgery. I have experienced low back pain for over 15 years. I had back surgery when I was 26 and had difficulties recovering. The doctors at Midwest Spine and Nerve Center have given me a new lease on life. I am now able to enjoy an active, pain-free lifestyle. Call Midwest Spine and Nerve Center now to schedule a no-obligation consultation to see if our progressive pain-relieving therapies are right for you. This is Matt Gunderson. We recently celebrated the life of George, loved by many, feared by walleye. As part of his fishing theme celebration, everyone in attendance accepted one of his favorite lures. Allow us to personalize every detail of a life well lived. Menards has the luxury products and on-trend styles to take your home's design to the next level. Whether you're updating a bathroom with a new faucet and fashion lighting, adding desperately needed storage, 
or if it's dressing up your dream kitchen, you'll get 11% off quality products that will help you turn your house into a home. Same big on durable porcelain tile from Mohawk. Only $159 each after 11% rebate. Don't wait until the weekend to enjoy a thick charbroil steak. Maybe you're liking it. Make a weeknight steak night at High Point Steakhouse, Southern Wisconsin's premier supper club. Well worth the short drive to Ridgeway. Attention, Wisconsin veterans. I'm Tony Evers, the governor of Wisconsin. If you are a veteran struggling to pay for rent, utilities, or other life-sustaining services, I want you to know that the Veterans Rental Assistance Program is here to help. So call 833-WISVRAP or visit VRAPWI.com. You've always been there for us. We want you to know that we're here for you. Lean back and enjoy the summer savings at the Century House right now. Get a $100 instant rebate for every $1,000 you spend on any qualifying stressless seating. The more you spend, the more you can save instantly. So furnish an entire room with the most comfortable seating in the world and watch the savings add up. Shop the Century House, 3420 University Avenue in Madison. Coming up on the CBS Evening News, our new series, The Age of AI, it kicks off tonight. Tonight, how artificial intelligence is taking movie magic to a whole new level. That's all coming up on the CBS Evening News. We could use some rain magic over here. <laughs> Do a rain dance, whatever it takes. But take a look at the live view from the WISC TV Skycam. I don't think those clouds are going to produce any rain anytime soon. Platteville Queen Bee Radio Skycam, uh, a couple more clouds there. Still not enough for rain, but there is some rain up to the north. Uh, you can see there are some uh, showers and thunderstorms developing in far northern Wisconsin, even some severe th storms in parts of western Iowa. Uh, but nothing right now for us. However, six-hour future track radar shows some hope. We'll have to see how much of that holds together when it reaches us later on tonight. All right, thank you, Gary. And we'll be back here at 6. We'll see you then.